What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out one of the best free scattering tools and plant libraries for Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's a ton of great resources out there for plants for Blender. You can find a lot of them on the Blender market. And um, so we've talked about a bunch of them before. You've got like Botanic, which has a really great collection of um, different plants. You've got GeoScatter, which is actually an advanced scattering tool, but it's got a bunch of plants built in um, as well as a bunch of these others like tree and vegetation and um, other tools like that but if you're looking for a free library to get you started you can find the plant library inside of the blender market i'll link to it in the notes down below but this is a collection of plants and other pieces of vegetation that are ready for you to bring in um, and use inside of blender um, and the cool thing about this is these are super high quality they're from the um they're from the the developer of GeoScatter, and um, they're a great place to kind of get started because you can download them for free. So in addition to being able to download the plant library, they also have a tool called Biome Reader. So Biome Reader is a tool that's designed to help you get started with scattering different objects. So it's a very simplified version of GeoScatter, which is probably the gold standard for scattering add-ons within Blender. GeoScatter has a ton of awesome tools for doing different kinds of scattering, um, really probably more tools than I've seen anywhere else. But so if you do want to do something advanced, you can check out GeoScatter. But Biome Reader is basically a simplified tool for scattering the objects. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start by downloading the plant library files. And so the plant library is going to come with both a uh, zipped file, a RAR file, which you're going to want to download and then unzip. You can use something like WinRAR in order to do that, as well as a scatter pack file, which you're going to want because Biome Reader can read that in order to place the plants where you want them to go. So make sure that you've downloaded those. So you want to make sure that you've downloaded the assets, the scatter pack, and then you also want to go in and download Biome Reader, which you can find in the plant library page right here. You have to click in here. You do have to put your email information in here um, in order to download that. So, um, But then you'll get an email that allows you to download the Biome Reader add-on. So then once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to start by installing Biome Reader. So you can just go to edit, preferences and just install that file that Biome Reader gives you right here. And so then the other thing you need to do is you need to make sure that this is finding those assets and that um, the scatter pack is installed. So what you want to do is you want to enter the manager. You want to start by going into your preferences. And so you want to tell this where that unzipped file is. So in this case, right, it's uh, the plant library free is where I have it. You can put that folder wherever you want, but after you unzip it, you need to come in here and tell this to look for that blend file so that it'll find it. The other thing you need to do is under install a package, you want to install that scatter pack file, that dot scat pack file by just clicking on install and then finding that file that you downloaded. But once you've done that, what that's going to do is that's going to give you access to different biomes in here, right? And so I have additional biomes because I have other add-ons as well. So I have like tree vegetation in here. I have trash kit in here. Um, and then I also have alpha trees. But what you're looking for is the plant library files. Those are just going to be the um, plant library biomes that you can then scatter inside a blender. And so if you look at this, most of what's in here is more like grasses rather than trees. There are some like lighter weight forests and things like that um, that are in here with some small trees. There's no like big trees inside of the plant library, but for creating grasses and lawns, this is a great place to start. And so the way that this works is once you've kind of set all of this up, what you need to do, and notice how if I tap the N letter key on my keyboard after I've installed Biome Reader, this is going to show up on the right hand side. It's going to ask you to choose an emitter object. Well, in this case, I'm going to select this object right here. And notice how I have options in here to either scatter objects or scatter using a biome. And so let's say I wanted to scatter one of these grass clumps or something like that in here. I could just drag one of them in here like this, right? So I've got a grass clump, but then I can select it. And notice how I have my plane selected in here. I can just click on scatter objects and this is going to scatter it 
on that surface. Now notice how when it does that, what it does is it creates a scatter system that's on this surface. I can select that system and come down here and adjust things like this. And um, it's limited in the sense that it doesn't have all of the options that GeoScatter has. It's not limited in the sense that it works really well and it will do what you need it to do, right? So I can come in here and I can make adjustments. Um, I can add randomization, other things like that. I could also add additional clumps in here. So notice how I could just select this object again and just run another density scatter like that. And notice how it creates another system what's in here. And these are easy to toggle on and off as well as to adjust down below. And there are options for doing things like turning collision off on here. So if I toggle collision, notice how this is gonna come in here, it's gonna find places where these instances overlap and it's going to remove them. Um, but there's other tools in here as well. So we can add like patterns and other things like that. I'm not gonna worry too much about that for right now. But the other cool thing about this, and this is the really powerful thing, is not only can you scatter using just a simple scatter like this, you can also, and let's create another plane here really quick. I'm just going to subdivide it and we'll just give it a little bit of up and down using some proportional editing. Nothing big, say that we've got a hill right here, but not only, and we'll make sure that we apply our rotation and scale, not only can you apply these singular objects, if you set up that biome with that scatter pack, so if you click on this, notice how I can pick different biomes, right? So depending on what I wanna do, I could pick the clean lawn. And so I wanna make sure that I select this new plane that I created, but when I open that biome reader and I click in here, this is actually going to scatter a biome, which is a collection of different grasses and other things like that directly on this surface. So notice how this lawn, for example, this scatters a collection of different objects on here. And then I could go into rendered mode and do other things like that, but notice what that does is that's going to allow me to quickly create a full system on here. And I could toggle this off if I wanted to and add a new system. So for example, maybe I wanna do like the rock plane right here. But again, I've got this plane selected. I can bring in that rock plane biome right here. And it's actually going to populate this entire thing with a biome system from that, that uh, scatter pack file that we had in here. So this is just like a super, super fast way to add vegetation to your objects. And notice how it does come in here and it does kind of protect you um, from heavy objects in here. So there's like a security threshold that you can set when you're bringing these things in. So notice how if I go into my settings right here, I can set a security threshold saying, hey, if you're scattering more objects than this, um, then we can set objects to bounds or um, basically what they do is they set those objects so that they don't display the full geometry in order to protect your computer from trying to display too much. So super powerful tool in that sense. And notice how it does also come with some ground materials in here. So for example, say that I wanted this ground to have a certain material. Well, there's materials built in um, to this library that I can drop in here. So notice how I could add that ground in here really quickly. And if you were to render these out, they're going to look really good. So say that I was to just drop an HDRI in here. So I'll use something from the Polyhaven collection. So maybe something like this just for some lighting. But if we jump over into rendered mode, and we'll hop into cycles. But notice how these are gonna render out really good and they're gonna look pretty high quality. So these are not like reduced quality assets or anything like that and you can download them and use them in Blender for free. And so if you're looking for a good starter point, this is definitely where you should start with scattering and bringing these free plants in. I mean, it's just a really great resource. And then if you need some additional functionality, you can always upgrade to that geo scatter add-on a little bit later. But for getting started and for doing stuff like this for free, you absolutely can't beat it and you should go give it a try. I will link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.